Galactic Standard Date Year 11356 Day 96 Sol Standard Date 4th of the 8th, 3267 Basilis stood in front of the giggling queens with a soft smile. Never fails, he thought, as he watched the scene. He looked around at the garden a little more and admired the scenery before he knelt down as close to their level as he could. Hello there, my name is Basilis, and the person on my back is Amaranth. You know her as Maleficus. As he said that, the comparatively tiny head of a woman with draconic features appeared over his shoulder and stared down at them. The Queen stared back in confusion before looking between each other for a moment and nodding their heads. May we examine you two? Just to confirm your energies ourselves, of course. Ah, also, my name is Kiri. The other two Queens beside me are Anatis and Teke. I manage governmental affairs, Anatis handles the military, and Teke holds the highest position in the clergy. She is actually a direct descendant of the one who first alerted us to your presence in the Vale. Basilus looked over the three queens, which each looked unique, not only in the attire being related to their work, but their very physiques. Kiri was wearing a red cloth that was straight over her body in a way similar to a toga that highlighted her smooth black carapace. Anatis was wearing something similar to Tel Akhtan's predator armor, but meaner looking and covered in spikes. He couldn't see much of her body, but she seemed like she could wrestle a bull even at only five feet long and two feet tall. Terke looked eerily similar to a warlock from old fantasy games. She was covered in various runes as well from using an inscription without the nanites to fix her as Bastus had. The black robe draped over her life frame was inlaid with a silver mural of Lunicia as she washed over Bastus's tiny form as he battled Amaranth back when she had lost her sanity. Bastus shrugged his shoulders. Go right ahead and examine us. It seems to me that you have some sort of genetic memory so Miss Teke should recognize me for the most part, right? Teke silently nodded her head. Yes, Great Slayer, your forms have changed, however, and in light of that and the current situation with the slimy bastard that controls time, we don't want to take any chances. We must confirm everything, she said, as the runic inscriptions on her started to glow a whitish green. She held out her two front legs and pointed them at the pair of gods. Red Ven Lunicia, Mena Le Lithitis, and Tor Remena Dos Taxi Natura. The off-colour green light enveloped the two for a moment, before receding back into Teke, who took a deep breath. I confound it with the power of the goddess. Their true nature is as they say. They mean us no harm, they are being truthful. The Slayer has ascended to godhood and assumed the mantle of death, as well as taken on some of the power of hatred from Maleficus. Maleficus in particular seems to have a couple of authorities buried beneath the stench of death and darkness of hatred that I could not see. Basilus croaked an eyebrow at her, and she just shrugged at him with a knowing look. He sighed and turned back to the young queens. So, we're all clear then? We can get the information we need and help devise strategies and cooperate in revolutionizing your military? Kiri nodded slowly. Yes, Lord Slayer. In fact, we would be honored by your cooperation and would take it a step further as our Rosarian sisters have. Since you are in fact not only gods who are on our side, but the leader of a race of people who have advanced enough to engage in warfare with the gods without the use of priests and veil energy, we would like a full alliance with the Terran Imperium. We will send our best and brightest to learn from you, and you are more than welcome to do the same. Basilus nodded his head. That sounds reasonable for a start. I'll have the guys back home draw up a draft and you can review it. Either way, let's put our heads together on this. The Azerians are being held back by you guys, but you don't have the temporal stabilizers we do, so they can just revive, right? And at his step forward. Yes. No matter how many times we lay waste to their lines, they can just send a thousand of the immature children at us to feed over and over. Basilus smiled and held out his hand. A small swarm of nanites appeared in his hand and built a small data pad. This has the blueprints and all knowledge necessary to build the stabilizers. Also, the prints for reviving your own are included. We don't need compensation. We're all in this together. The Queen froze for a moment, staring at the data pad. Anatis slowly reached out and grabbed the data pad. You are just giving us this? One of your biggest tactical advantages? One of your people's greatest achievements? A potential weapon of mass destruction? For free? Depending on the catch, I'll torture this device right here and now. Basilus smiled wide, unintentionally baring his teeth. Ha! There's no catch, but that is the best reaction I could have asked for. You are definitely my kind of people. You are good leaders. God, the evil incompetence around the galaxy has been so sad. You lot are a real relief. You, the Rosarians, and the Amonas are in particular really similar to humanity. Seriously though, take it. It's free. All I ask is that you remember the name of the man who created that technology. He was my best friend. 
and that was his final and greatest work. He would want me to share it. Anatis gave him a salute before turning and rushing the datepad over to another guard. Deke and Kiri both gave him a bow. Kiri sighed and looked up at the Metal Behemoth. Sorry for doubting you, Slayer, but we are naturally suspicious of things like that. We meant no offence. Anyway, I have a compiled history and a list of laws I can send your way as per your request to tell Mali. I was also thinking of making her the Torvare Ambassador that gets sent your way as you are already acquainted. Talactan can go as the military liaison to oversee any joint training as well as learn your tactics. Toke spoke up as soon as Kiri was done speaking. As for Teldracanus, we will need her to finish her job of assisting the rebuilding effort on Tolunus as the highest ranking member of the clergy on that world, after which we can assign her to train warrior priests to fight alongside your Terran battle groups. Basilus nodded his head and stroked his chin as he thought, Yeah, all of that sounds like it would be really beneficial, especially a collaboration with your scientists on learning how to refine and use the Veil energy to power devices. Well, if that's all... A sharp yell of, What? caught the attention of the group. They looked in the direction of the yell and saw Anatis sprinting back towards them. Hey, the Azerans are retreating. Teke, contact the clergy and find out where those fuckers went. Basilus' expression hardened for a moment, and he took a deep breath. I'll let you link to my mind as well, Teke. That way you can let me know what's going on as soon as you find out. In the meantime, I'm going to head back to the main battle fleet in GC space. I have to let Aurelius and the fluffy ones know what's going on here, and find out the situation over there. The group nodded in affirmation, and Teke quickly established a connection to Basilus before he began opening a rift.